morning. Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome to First United Methodist Church. Glad to have you all here with us in the building and also to welcome you if you are joining us on Facebook or YouTube. We're thankful that you've chosen to be part of our worship service. We hope that this time will be inspiring to you and uh, give you some hope for the days ahead, the weeks ahead, for the time that we have left in this world. Uh, we are thankful that you are part of us. We want you to feel connected. And because of that, we ask that if you could just say hello to us there on the comments. Hello, Tyler. See, I like that. Tyler did it. Uh, say hello in some way so that we can connect with you. We love to get to know you a little bit better and let you get to know us a little bit better, too. So you're part of us. We're glad you're here. I do have a few bits of announcements, things I want you to know about going on in the life of our church. First of all, if you are in the sanctuary here with us today in the ministry center, you'll see some red sheets of paper on the two tables. That is um, for our poinsettias. We're going to have the poinsettias this year. They are $20. That is not a fundraiser. They, By the time we pay tax, that is actually how much they cost. They're beautiful. Um, and you can uh, buy them in memory or in honor of someone. They'll be here and some upstairs as well, um, as we've done in years past. Uh, if you are listening online and would like to be part of that, there will be a form on our website. Hope that you will take advantage of that as well. I also wanted to tell you a couple of things that are coming up. Charge Conference is next Sunday at 5.30, and it will be by Zoom. So what that means is that wherever you are, you can join in and be part of our Charge Conference. It will be at 5.30. We will have the... Um, the numbers that you dial in on later in the week. And so uh, if you are interested in being part of that, uh, we ask that you please either call the church office or if you're going to be here next Sunday, we'll have it printed out so that you can pick it up and be able to call in. Um, also wanted to give you a little bit of information about the Doug Sullivan Thanksgiving meal. Um, we are going to have it this year. Um, it's going to be as close to the way we have done it in the past as we can make it under COVID conditions. Um, what that means is um, we are going to have delivery and pickup. We will not be having eating here in the building. Um, they are going to do the prep work on Monday through Wednesday and, of course, Thursday morning um, as well of the week of Thanksgiving. Um, they will be wearing masks and hand sanitizing and all of those things, staying as far away from each other as, as it makes sense and can be done. Um, and so if you are interested in providing, we expect to be a, have a fairly large number of folks to feed this year because there's a lot of people who will not be able to have what they call a normal Thanksgiving. So if you are able to contribute in some way, uh, whether that be financially or with your time, uh, please do let us know. You can put it in the offering boxes here. You can Venmo it by saying so in PayPal. Uh, on, on those apps, you can say what it's for. But um, we, it is a huge ministry. We have in the past fed 1,000 to 1,200 people, and we feel like that will be an accurate number again this year. Um, and as I mentioned, at that and, and many other, um, any other way, we are... Um, going to be wearing masks there. And I do remind you that while you're here in the building, we do have a protocol for masks and hand sanitizing and, and um, um, staying six feet away from each other. So we ask that um, you just remember what our protocol is and um, we want to keep everybody safe. So that's everything I have. I hope that we are ready for worship. Yes, we also need to, uh, we need some AV volunteers. Uh, the, hopefully, I think we're going to be, the system should be getting upgraded hopefully this week, and we'll be ready to do our live streaming with the camera that you see lined up there. We're, we're moving, we're, we're graduating up from the good old iPhone. <laughs> and so, uh, and be able to take a direct feed. And uh, uh, so, we're going to need, we need some volunteers to help us with that. 
And so if you are interested in helping with that and being trained on that, we need somebody reliable, uh, perfectly, per preferably and perfectly somebody uh, technologically minded. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, it'd be a wonderful way to serve. Also, we know that uh, usually uh, it's Veterans Day is right in the middle of the week this week. And so we do want to take a moment uh, to recognize our veterans. If, our, if we have any veterans here, would you please stand? Any veterans? Look at Thank you guys. We appreciate you. And to those watching at home, too, if you've served, thank you so much. And we duly appreciate that. Let's sing about Jesus. Y'all ready? All right.
Uh, his little daddy said, actually, they were married 73 years, but um, he counts the two years that they courted. His word, courted, that's a good old word. And so, uh, uh, so really, he counts it as 75. Um, and so, please pray for Mr. Porter and um, all of their family, and especially Jeff, you know, during this time. Also, Karen Sullivan um, is grieving the loss of her brother, John Lover. So we want to be in prayer for uh, Karen and her family during this time. Jean Phillips has asked that we be in prayer for her infant great-granddaughter, Collins, and, uh, who is having skull surgery Tuesday. And uh, we definitely want to be in prayer for little Collins and her mother is Laura Lee and um, also related to Steve Ray. So there we go. So we want to be in prayer for this precious little infant. Jean also has sister-in-laws, too, that are ill. Um, we want to continue to remember Chris. Uh, Chris with a cancer diagnosis, but uh, we, we are praying ahead for a good prognosis. And But right now we want to pray for you as you go through not only treatment and a plan, but some surgeries and just a, a road ahead. And so we're, we're walking with you, Chris. And we pray for Sarah Underwood, who is um, in treatment right now, too, that's um, doing that again. And just want to pray that, that she goes through that time well. Um, I know that there are others on your hearts, and we will have that time to just live the name right where you are, and, um, and, and we'll encourage you to do that. But let's now go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, on this beautiful Sabbath day, what a joy it is that we can gather and worship. It is the greatest gift that you give to us, that we are able to come together and approach you freely and confidently because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Lord, we are so grateful to you for the many ways that you bless us, you reach down from heaven and into our hearts, you bend an ear toward us, you, you lift your hand toward us and hold us. You hold us during good times, but especially you draw us close during difficult times. Lord, we this we especially are mindful of our nation and what we are going through, an election, election year, and all that comes with that. God, be a healer in our land and help us to remember, God, that we who are your people, first of all, our residency. He's in heaven, the kingdom of heaven, a kingdom that exists right here alongside the kingdoms around us. And yes, we are, we are citizens of a nation, but we are citizens of yours. We are, or we are heaven bound, but we are heaven residents now. Now is where it starts. And so how we respond, how we live out our, our being and we have how we move, how we how we are toward people, Lord reflects the kingdom that is most important to us. And so forgive us where we fail, where we fail to act and be as godly people. It matters. Because no matter who's in the presidency, Lord, we still are called to love you and love people, no matter what. And so we give ourselves to you for that. Lord, we are grateful for the men and the women who, even on this day, are away from family, away from home, serving us. Lord, we thank you for the veterans, for the, the, the past gift that they have given us, that today we can stand here freely, that, that we can experience the wonders of this nation, and we can do so on the foundation that has been built by the men and women who have served. We know, God, that their goal is peace. And so thank you. Thank you for working through them to uh, the way they join arms with one another to uh, protect and to serve not only our nation, but our world as well. We pray that you'll be with them every single day. Lord, for the names that we have called here today, for those who grieve, for those who suffer, for those who are in treatment, Lord, we just lift their names before you. We know that you hear us as we pray. But also, God, we come to this room today with burdens on our hearts. And so now hear us as either silently or aloud. We speak just the name 
of those that we would have called in this room and called out before you. Hear us as we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, because we are your children, we can pray confidently and boldly the prayer that Jesus taught us when together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So I will keep the sign on. Yeah. 
his teeth, huh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you, Montana. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Jason. And thank you all for being here. We're so glad that y'all are here today. Looks like the sun's come up. Sun's shining. I don't know how long we will last, but we will take a lot of dust. Today, we will be in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 1. And these are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamp and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. Some of the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, or later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We must always be prepared. Sometimes we get sleepy. Sometimes we get a little weary. And now Jesus uses this parable to describe what uh, the second coming is going to be like. And so it's almost kind of like we have to retranslate that back, right? And say what means what in this. And of course the bridegroom is Jesus. And this talks about when Jesus will be coming back for us. The bridesmaids, well that's the church, isn't it? It's the church. And their lamps with oil that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Five of them were foolish. Five were wise. Foolish took their lamps, but took no oil with them. If that was to happen today, if we were to talk about that today, we would say that they took their flashlight, but they didn't bring extra batteries. Because you see, at that time, the tradition, the bridesmaids would all be with the bride, and the groom come and he would get her and it would be this big procession, but the groom would not come until his father said it was time. They knew it was coming. They knew it was scheduled. But only when the, the groom's father said, okay, the time's come. Let's go get her. See, the bridegroom didn't even know. Jesus don't even know if he's coming back. Jesus is waiting for his father to say, it's time. The time has come. The foolish had no extra batteries. They had no extra oil for their lamps. But the wise took extra flasks of oil. So if we're talking about the Holy Spirit, if we are to be full of the Holy Spirit, we need to get all we can. We need to get a little extra. Trust me, God's not going to run out of Holy Spirit. But sometimes when we come to church, when we come to Sunday school, when we come to a singing, anything, anywhere that you go where your spirit is fed, sometimes we get just enough. I need just enough spirit to get me through the day. I need just enough spirit to help me get through this week. I need just enough spirit to last me. And then if I feel like I'm running out of spirit, I can come back to church and I can get some more spirit, right? I would encourage you to practice getting all the spirit you can. You can be greedy with that spirit because you never know when you're going to be in a situation and you might run out of spirit, right? Think back in March when, when this uh, thing hits, right? You couldn't go to church anymore. 
What, ha what happens if that's your only place where you get the Spirit and you couldn't go to church anymore? Man, that's a, that, that, was a hard, that was hard for me. That was a hard adjustment for me. And I know it was a hard adjustment for y'all too. What do we do? I'm going to run out of gas. I'm going to run out of Spirit if I can't go get my refill of Spirit. That's why when we are able, we ought to get as much spirit as we can. You've got room for it, and God has plenty to give you. This says, as the bridegroom was delayed, all became drowsy and slept. It's not like when Jesus was in the garden and he was telling his disciples, stay awake with me. Right? It says that they all fell asleep. Everybody was asleep. There are times where we are going to be Sleepy in the spirit? Yeah. We are going to be maybe a bit weary in the spirit? Yeah. But when that time comes and we are awakened and we are called and people need to see that your spirit within you, God's spirit within you, they need to see it. You don't want to be empty of spirit. Midnight came. And there was a shout, look, here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. The rapture is what this is talking about. The rapture. When Jesus calls off of us home. And friends, love, different people love to interpret this in different ways. Some people will say that you will have absolutely no warning whatsoever. No warning. Some people say that, well, no, you're going to have a little bit of warning. You're going you're to hear the trumpet sound, right? We're going to see Jesus in the eastern sky. We're going to be called up to meet him. Well, friends, this says when all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps, left after they heard the call, after they knew the bride was coming, they got up and then they tried to do the work. But it didn't do any good. Why? Because their lamps were empty. Their spirit was empty. That's why we must keep our spirit, our spirits filled. At that point, no one could help them. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. Some of you and me at times Sometimes you feel maybe your spirit might be running out of the bit. Have you ever felt that way? It's kind of a scary thing. When you feel your spirit dimming, when you feel your light dimming, it can be a very scary thing. You see people, though, and you say, I wish I had what they have. You see people whose spirit just seems to, they always seem to be up. They always seem to be everybody, everything is just grand and everything is just wonderful, right? And sometimes people like that really get on my nerves. Maybe because I'm a little jealous sometimes. Maybe because I wish I could be up always like that. I wish I could be full of the Spirit like that. I want a little bit about what they've got. Well, the thing of it is, is that you cannot make it on somebody else's oil. Because the, the bridesmaids, the foolish ones were asked to wise, give us some of your oil. They said, no, we cannot help you. Now, people's spirits and demeanors and character can be contagious. It can be. If you are around people who are uh, someone who is constantly upbeat, somebody who has a high spirit, well, there's a good chance that you know, hey, you might start seeing the, the brighter side of things too. That works just the opposite way too. If you're around somebody that's always glass empty kind of person, glass half empty, all the negativity, that's a battle that we all fight. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's the way you see the world. Well, I would encourage you, if that's the way that you feel, to do what the wise uh, bridesmaids told the foolish to do. They said, you need to go see the dealer. <laughs> you need to go see the dealer and refill your lamp. We all need to refill our lamps. We all do. Even if you 
are a, mostly a positive person, even if you were a spiritual person and you walk in the light and your feet never touch the ground and life is just on one big cloud, that still has to be refilled every now and then, doesn't it? And we have to be very aware where our dealer is, where we get our fill. Now, I've seen people come across people who probably have too, that you wish you could help. If you could take your spirit out and put it into them, you would if you could, but you can't. The only thing that we can do is say, well, let me tell you, let me tell you why I am the way I am. Let me tell you where my spirit comes from. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about this Holy Spirit that is free for us. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit can do for you. The Holy Spirit can make sense out of things, but the world don't make sense. The Holy Spirit is that still, small, guiding voice, that little conscience in the back of your mind. The Holy Spirit is the protector. Holy Spirit is what helps us to communicate with God. He advocates. Yes, yes, yes. Spiritual energy cannot be derived from others. Verse 10 says, And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the banquet, and the door was shut. One of the things that we have to remember, too, as Christians, as believers, even as mere seekers, you are all invited. You are all invited to the wedding banquet. Nobody who is hearing me can pout and say, what well, you want invitation? I'm giving you your invitation now. God's invitation to the wedding banquet. You're all invited. Now, you have to be ready because we don't know when he's going to fall and say, all right, let's go. The wedding is now. We have to stay alert. We have to stay to stay in the spirit. We have to be sure that we visit our spiritual dealer periodically, and you can never visit him too much to get that overflow of spirit. Later, the bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. You see, the foolish bridesmaids had finally gotten their business in order. They had gotten their oil, and they were ready. But it was too late. I found their religion. But it was too late. It's too late. Jesus says, keep away, for you know neither the day nor the hour. I, heard people, I hear people say, live each day as though it were your last. Now, when I hear that term, I think people are talking about, well, in case there's a tragic death, right? We've got to live each day like it's our last because we don't know when it may be. We may, we may be killed or one of our loved ones may be killed or die. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible, Paul? Isn't that a terrible way to live? I'm saying live each day like it's your last for the rapture. Live each day like it's your last because if Jesus may be calling you, may be calling all of us. It should be an exciting thought. That thought should excite you. It should be thrilling to you. It should be humbling for you. It should be loving for you. Jesus gives us every last chance. Though. He does. He gives us every last chance. Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. And he says... Do you not know that in a race, the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath or trophy, but we an imperishable one. Paul says, so I do not run aimlessly, nor do I box as though beating the air. But I punish my body and enslave it, 
so that after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. We are running the race of life. We are running God's race. God's race is not a sprint. You probably all know people like I do who they find out about Jesus. They get saved, as it were. They get reborn. And what do they do? They go from zero to 100 miles an hour as hard as they can. But what happens if you're in a race and you do that? Towards the end, you're going to be out of breath. I can't make it anymore. Just don't give up. Please keep in mind that God's grace is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And if you're in a marathon, you have to pace yourself. You have to pace yourself. You don't have to be the fastest. You just have to stay the course. And if you veer up, get right back on course and finish the race. And the only way you can finish the race is with God's help. God's not putting obstacles in your way. The devil will try to trip you up. Oh yeah, the devil will try to trip you up. The devil will put those detour signs in. He'll have rocks come down. He'll stick his foot out just when you get your stride. But the whole time you've got God right there at the finish line. Clapping his hands, rooting you on, saying, come on son, come on daughter, come on, come on, come on, I'm waiting with arms wide open. Christian and I were watching a video of this kid that was learning how to walk. And she was so happy when she was learning to walk and she was running to her father and her arms were wide and her eyes were big and she just had the biggest old grin on her face. She was so excited. I hope that is the friend of mine that we have when we think about rapture, when we think about Jesus coming back for us. Sometimes we treat our faith as a sprint instead of a marathon. But slow and steady wins the long race. It's easy for us to keep thinking earthly. It's easy for us to keep thinking about our earthly bodies and our earthly circumstances that we have to deal with. But I would encourage you to think of the spiritual race that you're running. That we're all running. If you feel your lamp running out, go see your dealer. If you say, I don't know who my dealer is, make an appointment with me. Come see it. I can help you find a dealer. We can get that, we can get that lamp so full, it is overflow. Amen and amen. Would you stand? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come here today. Father, some of our lamps are full of oil. They're overflowing. We have so much to spare. Father, some of us feel our lamps beginning to dim a little bit. Father, it's a little frustrating. Father, some of us, our lamps have gone dry. Father, we need an outpouring. We need an outpouring of your holy oil in an outpouring of your spirit. And Father, we are not allotted just so much, Lord. We are not given just uh, X amount. Father, we are given all we need and more in abundance. Father, help us to be seeking, help us to be receiving, and help us to be sharing the souls. Father, we thank you so much for the blessings that you give us. Father, as we leave here, go out into the world, God, help keep our paths straight and our heads held high and our spirits strong and overflowing. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.